Hello Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with our patch 12.5 high elo tier list. Our regular tier list that we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates is aimed at around a plat skill level, but we kept adding things to the upper tier list on the basis that they were good when played like a challenger. But let's face it, at the end of the day, a platinum player just isn't going to make Jace work like a pro level player would. So we feel like we need to make a separate tier list aimed at the top of the solo queue ladder. With all that being said, we'll make some bit adjustments to our regular tier list as we separate the two. Now let's get back into the video. First we'll start off with our top laners. While the Janna top strat is probably still viable in some way, shape, or form, the play rate is so low that we're just going to remove it from the top tier list for now. I bet that we'll be back with a new support solo lane strat in a couple of months though. Initially we thought that the million Zeri nerfs would bring her down from being OP, but it turns out that she's still insanely busted. The one nuance is that you have to have her ult up when you're team fighting. Without it, she isn't nearly as much of a threat. But if you were to judge her purely off how strong she is when fighting when her ultimate is available, she would deserve a new god tier to be opened up all for herself. The one bit of advice I have for you is just that if you're going to try and play Zeri in the top lane, you must absolutely ban Aurelia. That matchup is borderline impossible. You lose early, mid, and late against her. You don't really get a kiter, since she gap closes way too easily before you get the ulti stacks that you need to do so. Auction has been struggling a bit more recently in the past couple of patches, so he got demoted to the S tier. That means he's still pretty damn good, but he's not so overwhelming that you can just take over the majority of your games like the champions in the OP tier list should be able to. One thing that helps bump up your performance on this champion is knowing how to build. So many people just default to tank boots and shield bow, but Auction isn't a bruiser. He's a carry. If you want to melt people, offensive items like Kraken Slayer and Collector are the way to go. Gangplank is one of those champions with the biggest performance gap between high elo and the rest of solo queue. In the right hands, you could even make an argument for this champion going into the OP tier. The obvious big difference maker is how well a high elo GP uses their barrels. Turns out it helps you when you have the mechanics to actually consistently pull off double barrels and triple barrel combos. Remember when people used the phrase vein spotting to make fun of bad veins trying to make a montage worthy play but failing in the process? Well a GP spotting should be a thing too. Odds are any GP that you see in the lower ranks is inconsistent at best. Even diamond players are pretty bad at the champion overall. But when you have a top level player that hardly even makes mistakes, GP becomes a super oppressive laner, with his own control from his barrels that make him crazy strong as a lane bully. Fjord gets bumped down to the 8 tier when you're in the higher elos. This may come off as a surprise, because you probably think that better players should actually perform better on a champion with a high skill ceiling. But the thing is, people know how to actually take advantage of her weakness a lot better too. People are a lot better at baiting out her repost, or spacing away from her to make her cue the air or a minion. People are also a lot better at itemizing, so you usually see a Bramble Vest or Executioner's Calling on your opponent's first recall, which usually makes a huge difference on how the lane plays out. Karthus is always a good pick in any role in high elo. He isn't quite as strong in the top lane to be considered S tier or higher since he can't really 1v1 the champions in the role, but he is able to consistently carry later in fights due to how easily it is to safely farm with him. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Due to how much jungle impacts the game, there's a lot more variance between what's good and bad in high elo versus low elo compared to other roles. That being said, we probably miss a few things that could go higher or lower since it's quite a bit to move around. Kindred is one of the true hyper carries of League of Legends. Early on, she's way too weak to even 1v1 most champions that you run into, and even her extended DPS is pretty mediocre. Even if you path well and manage to get fed, it's not enough to hard carry your games. You have to be good at understanding her passive. Knowing when and where your mark will spawn, and knowing the best opponent to mark to get your stacks off is basically necessary to succeed. If you don't have 7 stacks for teamfights, you probably aren't going to be all that effective. Since high elo players don't have a much better grasp at those type of things, it stands to reason that she's going to shine a lot more at the top of the ladder. Echo also goes up to the OP tier when looking at high elo. The general trait most assassins have is high risk, high reward gameplay, but Echo is very low risk while still having high reward. He's not the best early duelist or ganker, but he definitely is not the worst. Plus, he's very mobile, and he's never really in danger of dying if he runs into an opponent. His fast clear speed allows him to keep up his income, and post 6, you can go for any play that you want with the ultimate get out of jail free card in the back pocket. While Hecarim is already a scary force in all elos, with some of the best snowball potential of any jungler, he's especially scary when you have someone in high elo who knows how to minimize risks. The general idea of Hecarim is power farm, then look for ganks. Don't go for a stupid random place when you have half your jungle up. But in lower elos, that tends to happen. Higher elo players usually are a lot better at establishing a game plan, and then sticking to it until the end. The other thing that makes them better at higher elos is that tankier champions can actually carry a lot harder there, since your teammates are more likely to clean up a fight when you pull off a good engage. When first thinking about champions that come to mind that are better in high elo than lower elo, Viego is immediately the first that comes to mind. 
Viego himself isn't all that complicated, but when you consider that you have to know how to take over the game and play as every champion in the game, he clearly has the highest skill cap. Even players up at the very top of the ladder aren't always good enough to play him. It takes someone who is truly good at League and has at least a decent grasp of what everybody does. Shin has fallen off really hard in the last few weeks, to the point that I almost want to throw him into the C or even D tier. His very early game stages are still pretty good, but if he doesn't snowball insanely hard, he just flops massively. And even with the lead, he usually falls off hard by 15 or 20 minutes. When Yi got his little rework that was supposed to be a nerf on this patch, he was insanely broken and could just destroy games at any elo through pure stack checking. Sadly for Yi players and thankfully for the rest of us, that was quickly nerfed. And he's just back to being a scaling hyper carry. But in high elo, people just don't let you farm and scale. He's constantly invaded by the enemy jungler, mid and support, and never gets a chance to come online. Karthus is kind of in the same boat as Yi. He's normally a pretty good pick in high elo, but the current meta just isn't very favorable for him. Aggro early game junglers can often snowball a game way out of control before he's able to do much. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Dreamer gets thrown into the OP tier here. He's probably the most complained about champion in high elo, with players in both solo lanes acknowledging how overpowered and unhealthy this champion is. He either wins a lane and snowballs hard, or just goes even and farms up, and then just outscales whoever tries to match him in the side lane. There's no real counter, no real answer to what he does. It's pretty surprising that he isn't a much more popular pick. Kiana's recent nurse brought down her burst a bit, but high elo Kiana players are way too clean with their combos to let that keep them from carrying games with her. Whether it's going for instant kills in the mid lane or roaming and winning the rest of the map, they make it look easy. Very similar to Kiana, a very good talent player can make the champion look completely effortless. Even if you show them as much respect as possible in lane, they know exactly when they can flash in and go for an all-in on you. Champions with global pressure tend to be a lot better in higher elos as well, since the players there have a better eye for when to make plays across the map. While he may not have a traditional global ultimate like Karthus or TF, being able to parkour across the map is honestly just as good. Plus, he's able to gank from really off angles. One more factor that makes him better in higher elos is just the overall better macro sense that players have there. In lower ranks, most talents that get fed just run around looking for kill after kill. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's hit or miss, quite literally. But the people way up at the top always have a game plan that allows them to catch side waves, and either intercept the enemies coming back to catch the waves that they push, or roam to the opposite side and make a pick happen there. Pantheon gets bumped down a tier. He wins lane pretty hard, but since players are a lot more careful in higher elos in general, you're a lot less likely to see Pantheons getting solo kills and snowballing hard early on. Just like we mentioned with Talon, the global pressure from his ultimate gives him a lot of strength, and is the main reason that he makes the A tier, over being relegated to being a B tier counterpick. Lux and Xeroth both belong in the C tier and higher elo. There's almost an argument to put Lux in the B tier, but there's just way too many other mages that do a better job than her. Both of these picks are so susceptible to all types of threats, both in the mid lane and other roles, and high elo players actually take advantage of that. Despite having a pretty high performance rating in the mid lane, Seth belongs in the B tier simply because he only does really well as a counter pick. When you get him against a melee champion that just wants to trade with you, you can easily overpower them. You win at all stages of the game and can just split to win with no hope of them matching you. But he's a lot less useful against ranged champions that can just wave clear and ignore him, and then just be more useful in fights. Now, let's move things down to the bot lane. There isn't a whole lot different here than compared to lower elos. Like we mentioned earlier with Zeri, Jinx is another champion that is borderline deserving of a new god tier being added to our list. She's just a bit better than the other champions that are so good that they make the OP tier. She's good at all ranks, but high elo players are especially skilled laners, and can consistently make it to the team fights and wreak havoc with her. Twitch is another scaling pick that does particularly well in high elo. Just like with Jinx, it's how well these players play lane that make Twitch shine. They know how to abuse weaker opponents with Twitch's underestimated early damage, but also know how to play safe and survive against scarier kill lanes. To finish things off, we have our supports. Lulu is still a huge favorite pick in high elo, so she definitely belongs in the S tier here. Having the ability to win most lanes with her impressive trading and keeping the ADC alive while also turbocharging her DPS is pretty broken. Who would have guessed? Nami is also good, but not good enough to warrant being in the S tier. There are much better options for support that just have way more of an impact on the game overall, rather than just focusing on winning lane and then sort of just being there in fights later. The Seraphine buffs that were aimed at making her a better support didn't do enough to make her a viable pick in high elo. She's okay if the game goes pretty late, but she just really has no real presence in the early game, and most of the time, you just see her get rolled and the game ends before she can come online. Finishing off our list, we have Pike, who is quite a bit less effective at high elo. Most people are a lot better at playing the 2v2 against him, so he snowballs less frequently. 
Since snowballing is sort of important given that he's an assassin, he obviously isn't going to be quite as successful here. And that wraps things up for our patch 12.5 high elo tier list. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list down in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. With the new year and the new season started, we're bound to have some great content coming up for you guys. Best of luck on Summoner's Rift, everybody. And you know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.